Hello out to all you wonderful people. This is Andre the Game Idea Guy. Thank you once again for lending me your time and your ear listening into another Gamer's Thoughts discussion. And <sighs> kind of was expecting this to be the case at some point. But hey, Microsoft and Sony are looking to put ads in games. Well, mostly Microsoft has started the process, I believe. And then Sony is also interested in seeing where it goes. And if maybe they would potentially adapt it. <clears throat> now, when it comes to certain things, I don't particularly care if there are ads in the games, like, you know, when it comes down to stuff that is free to play. I don't really care because I'm not spending money to play the game at that point. I'm just playing it and the ads are a minor inconvenience at that point. But <clears throat> my worry is if this is going into paid products. Now, I have made the suggestion before when I had talked about Microsoft potentially bringing back Primetime Live quite a while ago. That they could use ads to help support it. Because you'd be basically treating it like an actual game show. But at the same time, you're advertising to both your contestants as well as those who are just watching. Which is a benefit to them in and of itself. And on top of that, if Microsoft were to set aside a separate <clears throat> YouTube channel for Primetime Live, as well as a, a separate Twitch channel and any other live streaming platform like Facebook and whatever, and they set aside their own specific live streaming channels for Primetime Live, were they to do it, it would be a good idea. But this is going back into the direction of Games that are of an extreme cost and advertising in games to help with the sustainability of making profit from them. Now, I'm not for it if it is, again, a game that you pay a price for. But this is also why I particularly wasn't one who really gave a damn about graphical leaps and such. Because all of the additional work that it takes to go into making the graphics better and slightly neater, slightly cleaner, a, quite, a little bit sharper, <clears throat> all the extra work that goes into doing that drives the cost up. And the cost is higher, that means that the companies make less profit on the games, which is why games are now more expensive than they were when the price point was set. And... <clears throat> It's one of the reasons why I think companies should have just, you know, taken a back burner on jumping to 4K and such. It costs a lot of money. The transition to HD was expensive. Now they're trying to transfer, trans, <laughs> transition, not transfer, goodness, transition to even higher quality imagery. And that just, in the long run, it becomes a big problem. And I, I know I'm one of the few people who, at this point in time, if a game came out and it was 480p or 540p, I'd be able to play it no problem. Because I don't care about the graphics of a game as much as many other people do. I could play a game running at 854 by 480 or 690 by 540 as long as the game is stable and the elements of the game that make it endearing or intriguing to me are there. I don't particularly need even 720p in order to be able to enjoy a game. And I'm not complaining about better looking, better quality visually for games. I'm just saying I don't specifically need all that. As long as I can tell what's on the screen, I'm good. I don't care if it's a little bit fuzzy. I don't care if it's a little bit janky. But as long as I can tell what's going on on screen, I'm a happy customer. But I'm not everyone. And on top of that, buzzwords and popularity 
have made it so that this is what the gaming industry is heading towards. People want more games of higher quality to be released faster and to be able to pick up those same games at rock bottom prices and damn near everywhere. And then don't expect that there's going to be sacrifices made. One such sacrifice was dividing games up into pieces and having certain editions available in certain places and certain editions that had content that others didn't have. And then we got to changing the standard price for a game at launch. So this is just another one of those things that comes from game development just being more expensive. Again, I'm pretty sure not everyone's going to agree with that because it'll be like, well, there are game engines, which makes the process a little bit cheaper, but that doesn't cut down on a lot of the work. And that's something people don't understand. Just because you're using a game engine doesn't exactly mean that, hey, all development costs are just zeroed out at this point. And then if you're a bigger company or your game gets big enough, then guess what? You get charged for using those engines unless you paid for them outright beforehand. So this, again, everything isn't just going to be, oh, well, I can just throw this together here, throw some shaders here and there and everything's going to be fine. No, it costs money. It takes time and effort and that costs more money. Game engines make the process easier, but that comes with its own boatload of problems if someone doesn't know how to work the ins and outs of that engine that they're working with. So in all respects, in all respects, this is what was, this was the, the, pretty much the planned result of everyone wanting to push and push and push and push to impress everybody with visuals but not to push and push and push and push to impress everyone with actual creativity and again not saying that it's not creative for the visual standpoint to be 20 times better than what it was in the last decade but just in the long run, <clears throat> the faster everybody pushed towards this, the more expensive it makes things. And honestly, it's going to make it harder to get into this hobby unless you're somebody who games solely on mobile or only plays free to play stuff. Eventually, it's going to mean that the console's prices are going to have to go beyond $500. Especially if people are looking for a PS5 Pro or I don't know what they would call it, but an Xbox Extra. These are things that have to be considered. And it's like gamers don't want to take the time to look at the nuance and potentially understand it. They just want, hey. I want better looking games and I want them running at this particular frame rate. And if you can't do that, then your shit's garbage. <clears throat> Forgetting that not every game needs 60 frames. Turn-based stuff really doesn't require it. <sighs> it's frustrating to somebody who takes the time to think about these things and analyze this stuff because <clears throat> it seems like the rest of the community makes it to the conclusions that I come up with four or five years after I come up with them. And being that most things that I, I figure out that the rest of the gaming community doesn't figure out, when I figure it out at a time that it's not the popular notion or thought process to have, I'm one of those with, I guess, a, a much more quiet voice as far as the gaming community goes even though you could look back through the backlog of things I have said and find that many of the things that I've either predicted 
would happen or said, hey, this is a potential direction things can go, you'll see that uh, I'm pretty accurate. <clears throat> Not always, but in most cases, I am. If I could get my voice out to more people and kind of point these things out and hopefully find some sort of popularity while doing that and remaining as true to myself as possible, maybe more people would listen. That's the part that bugs me really is just like, or it doesn't even have to be me. But if someone who's bigger than me starts you know, thinking these things through or at least stop shilling for all these companies because many of them are getting paid by them and just tell the honest truth of what they see the community would listen and I know I'm not the only one that finds these things out or figures these things out I'm far from it and again, I'm not always right. Hell, I'll openly admit I was skeptical of the Switch becoming successful. Because the same pattern at which the Wii U was crapped on before its launch was the same thing that happened with the Switch. The difference was the Switch took off and the Wii U didn't. And back during the Wii U's time, me and people that were other people that were members of the gamers at large. Say, hey, there's more to this console than you guys know, more than you think. We got crap going for it. I remember that. I've been around since then. I'm just one of the few voices that doesn't pick fights and conflict over just saying, hey, this is what I see happening. This is what I think is going to happen. And hey, this is some cool shit that's right here that I think would be cool to do. Oh, I use that word twice in that sentence, making it redundant. Either way. <clears throat> Just being that I have had a decent amount of experience with the gaming community and seeing the changes in the gaming industry, this is something that it honestly was easy to foresee would be a potential thing to happen. And now it's going to get a crap ton of backlash as it is right now. But eventually, it's just going to start happening. And yeah, while people will be upset, it's going to be under their favorite franchises and their favorite games. But then they're going to become accepting of it because it's not too obtrusive to them when they actually play the game. Where they'll see billboards for physical real world products and advertisements for physical real world products for people to purchase the game may even have a way to reach the source so you can make the purchase there's something that potentially is going to happen at some point it's coming and it's all to make gaming less expensive on the companies and allow them to make in, take in more pro profit now some companies don't need to resort to these things in order to make more profit but because of their shareholders and the people investing in them who want to see rising profits on a regular basis instead of a steady consistent profit they're going to do it but again don't take my word for it you don't have to it will eventually happen then somebody's going to come back to this and be like yeah, he was right. Give it two to three years. Then come back and check with this discussion and see if I was right. But I'm going to drop it here. Thank you guys for being patient through my rambling. <laughs> Keep your eyes and ears up for more stuff from me. And until the next time, enjoy your games. Peace out, everybody.